If you, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 1. Yeah, it's going to be Christmassy today. We're going to talk a little bit about Mary, if that's all right. And, and I want to kind of lean into some of the things that we see. Uh, how many of you have just been blessed by the Lord because of the weather the last couple of days? Yeah. Um, if you're clapping. Um, I've never excused anyone from service before. <laughs> but I'm just going to tell you straight up, one degree is not enough degrees. It's not. It's not enough. <laughs> hey, if you have, if you have struggled to, with utilities and gas and all that different stuff, I know a lot of people did in our area. And if you're here and you're part of that utility company, guys, thank you so much for the work you put in doing that and working to get that back. Um, I literally, they reached out to us in regards to the REACH Center and the shelter that we have open and said, hey, can we trust you guys to help us out? I said, absolutely, we're here for you guys in the community. What can we do? And uh, they called us yesterday afternoon or, or, or late morning, and by late evening last night, they were like, hey, if you have anybody show up, you can tell them to go head on home. We got everything worked out. And so they just put it in yesterday. And so if that's you, thank you for that. If it's not you, make sure you thank the people that did that. They put in a ton of work from a lot of different places to do that. And man, I promise you, it's a lot easier to give a compliment than to gripe about it, all right? And so do that. But man, I'm so thankful for today. I'm thankful for the, the cold this week was a reminder that I, I'm not built for that any longer. Um, I'm just not. I, I know how God has wired me. I'm a beach person, uh, and, that's, and God put me right here in the Midwest where there's tons of beaches. Um, <laughs> And so, so the weather this week, is, it's an interesting juxtaposition because we live in the Ozarks and because we live in the Ozarks, we will all complain about the exact same thing on the opposite end of the spectrum in six months. <laughs> right? In July and August, we're going to be like, it's so stinking hot. I don't know why anybody, and we have this gift in the Ozarks, we can complain about it all because we see it all. Kind of like that farmer's insurance commercial, right? And, and so there's this, this paradox almost between what we saw yesterday and then I saw in the news that like next week it's going to be really nice. Yes. You know, and, and, and you go, man, how, what in the world? Well, everybody's just going to stay sick from October till about February and that's how we do it here in the South. And so there's this paradox of this. I also see people all the time go, man, I just want this year to be a calm year. I don't want to stress or worry about gifts or anything. And some of you that said that in November still have one more trip to Walmart to make, right? <laughs> it's a paradox where you just kind of go, well, I know that's that doesn't sound like it should be the case, but it's going to end up being the case. And so I want to just talk through this idea of Mary. I want to give you some things today maybe that will challenge you. And some, some hopefully, I, I want to come back to this phrase in, in Luke chapter 1, I believe it's verse 37. And, and this phrase should become, for some of you, this phrase needs to come, become your new John 3.16. I know John 3.16 is a big one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's, we know that one is engraved into our hearts. We've heard it so much. But for some of you, Luke 1.37 needs to be your no, new go-to verse. And it simply says this. For nothing will be impossible with God. Amen. See, we serve a God of paradox. We serve a God who can show up in the impossible and make it possible. We, show, we serve a God who can show up in the, eye, in the eye of something that should be awful and somehow make it beautiful at the end. That is the God we serve. He is this God that takes things that don't make sense and somehow makes them make sense. I can look around the room and see that some of you in your marriages, you go, hey, there was a season when this was a train wreck, but God. I can see some of you with your kids, you go, man, there was a season when I didn't know what my children were going to do, but God showed up. And what did he do? He did something impossible in your life. And, but we, it's also this verse, the paradox of this is it's in a Bible that we believe, that we lean into. The paradox is, although we know it's in there, this verse, we struggle believing. I didn't get any amens on that. Like, not one. How many of you know that phrase to be true? We struggle believing that all things are possible with God. And we struggle believing it because somehow we work ourselves into the equation. 
If I'm trusting God, man, I'm in. That's why it's so easy to blow out that Sunday school answer. Nothing is impossible with God. He goes, hey, but I need to use you to do it. And we go, <laughs> I'm out. I'm not, it's not me. God, there's, you got, there's better. There's more. It's more equipped, more talented. There's, there's just, there's better options out there than me. And then we lose the faith of this verse that says nothing is impossible with God. So I'm going to walk through this text, and I want to give you just maybe a few things to challenge you about, about where you stand in this. Challenge you with Mary, because Mary is one of, one of these interesting Bible people that, I don't, I don't like using the phrase character, because when we say character, sometimes we think it's fictional. She's a person. This was a, a young lady at this time who was about to step into a whole world of different we don't know her name. We don't really know anything about Mary's family before this moment in Luke chapter 1 or Matthew chapter 1. In fact, in Matthew chapter 1, we still don't get anything. We get a long list of Joseph's family who is in the lineage of David, but we don't get anything about Mary. Nothing other than that she was a young girl from Nazareth. And so here in this passage we see as we walk into this, I, I want to kind of dive in as we, as we start to embrace this Luke 137 as our new verse. Maybe you need it for this year coming up, this 2023, as you're walking into the struggles that are going to show up. You say, Vince, that's discouraging. Why would you say struggles are going to show up? Because I'm not going to lie to you. How many of you know there's going to be a hill tomorrow and a valley the day after that? It just happens. It's not a bad thing, it's just a real thing. But if I can go into it knowing for nothing, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. We see Mary picking up and, and she dives into this. Luke chapter one, I'm gonna back up to verse 28. And it says this, Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, <laughs> trying to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Angel shows up and says, favored woman, accepted woman, don't be afraid. And Mary kind of dials back a little bit like I think most women would when an angelic being shows up in your home and says, what are you doing here? That's the thought. She sat back and she pondered what type of salutation, King James, what type of salutation this might be. In other words, what is this thing doing in my house? Why are you here? And I love this, this soliloquy that the angel goes on. She, the angel just dives in and just goes right into it. The angel said to her, but do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom. There will be no end. Woo! That's good. <laughs> Listen what Mary heard. Um... Conceive in my womb, bear a son, but I'm a virgin. She didn't hear none, any of the rest of that. The first thing that he said was, you are going to conceive a son, you're going to conceive and bear a son. And then he went on this little three verse paragraph about how awesome Jesus is going to be. And Mary stopped right up here at verse 30, whatever, and said, <clears throat> hold up, wait a minute. I, I need you to clarify something for me. This doesn't make sense in my situation. This doesn't make sense. What you're saying doesn't make sense in my situation. How many of you have ever been there? Where you feel like God is promising you something, where God is asking you to do something, where God is challenging you to be something or to go somewhere or do something for him. And you go, God, wait a minute. This doesn't make sense in my situation. Lord, I want to follow you, but my situation says I'm not qualified. Lord, I want to follow you, but my situation says I'm not equipped enough. Lord, I want to follow you, but my situation says 
something different. Mary's situation said something very different based on what the angel just told her. And I want to give you this promise, and I want to give you just a couple things like this, just some one-line promises that I pray are encouraging to you. The first one is this. Don't let your circumstance determine your destination. Don't let your circumstance, don't let your situation right now determine what your destination may be. Because had Mary went, (laughs) no, I'm out. Check with Sally next door. That's, Sally, did you know? That doesn't matter. That's just weird, right? <laughs> what if it had been Ethel? Like, wow. I just messed up the rest of y'all's Christmas, sorry. <laughs> Mary said, my situation, wait, hold on. How? How, how I'm, I'm, I'm a virgin. She just comes right out with it to the angel. I'm, I'm a virgin. Conceive in my womb, bear a son. Not in the cards. So Mary stops him on a technicality. It's a big one. I mean, it's a big technicality. She's a virgin. He just references a child. My situation doesn't match the destination you're talking about. I'm not, a, I'm not equipped. I'm literally not experienced to have a child. And the angel continues and he says, hey, here's how this is going to work. You're going to, the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you and you'll conceive a son. Wonderful, mighty God, counselor, prince of peace. You shall be named Emmanuel, God with you. These times in our lives when we start looking at our situation, we start kind of wondering, am I ever going to get where I need to be? Anybody been there? Am I ever going to get, man, if I could just get over this hump, if I could just get over this line, if I could ever just get to this place, and I'm just going to tell you some of the reason that you're not a little further down the road is because you're continually looking at your situation and not trusting the God of the impossible for your destination. You're constantly looking around you, and as you look around you, you miss things that God is asking for you to look up, look up, look up. Straight as the gate narrows the way. The problem with the narrow way is sometimes it's easy to get off track on a narrow way. You can't look the other way. You can't look around when the way is narrow. There's not a lot of wiggle room when the way is narrow. And so some of you have said, I just can't even walk the narrow way. I've got struggles. I've got issues. I can't find the right this. I can't find the right that. And so my situation doesn't make sense with what God is calling me to do. Everybody say it with me. For nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Second thing we see here, the thing about Mary, it wasn't that she was questioning what was happening. She was just asking a question. I'm amazed that she was as chill as she was with an angel in the house. She says, hold up, I'm a virgin, this can't work. He explains it to her, this is what we're going to do. This is how this is going to work. We see Mary drop into a really pretty, pretty interesting text. She responded, I, verse 38. Verse 37 says, for nothing is impossible with the Lord. That's the last thing that the angel says. And Mary goes to verse 38 and says this. I am the Lord's servant. May everything that you've said about me come true. So regarding your situation and your destination and you're going, I don't know that I can get there. I don't know that I can get there. I don't know that I can get there. And the reason you keep saying you don't know that you can get there is because you don't feel like you're either equipped or you don't feel like you're qualified because your background's been too trashy, because your past has been too messed up, because you've been just too damaged. The goods are no good anymore. I got nothing to offer the Father. And so there's no way I'm ever going to be what, what I feel like God wants me to be. Let me tell you a lesson from Mary. The surrender that she showed trumped her surroundings. The surrender trumped all the stuff that didn't make sense in her situation. The fact that she said, here I am, use me. It doesn't matter where you've been, doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter the baggage that you bring to the table, no matter how much luggage you're bringing with you. How many of you got some luggage? Say amen. Amen. Got some stuff in the closet, right? And you drag it into everything. Regardless of that, 
Your situation changes with your surrender. But you have to be willing to surrender. Here's a young girl, anywhere between the ages of 14 and 17, theologians say. 14 and 17. Saying, Lord, whatever you want to do with me, you do with me. You know what this means, Mary? I'm not ignorant. You know exactly what it means. It means I'm going to be a pregnant girl and it's not going to be my husband's. But I'm supposed to just work it out. Yep. What are you going to do, Mary? I'm going to surrender whatever you say. Whatever I need to walk through, I'll walk through. Wherever I need to go, I'll go. And the Lord prepared a way. He prepared a way. He gave her confirmation after confirmation when she goes and visits her cousin Elizabeth, when John the Baptist leaps in the womb of Elizabeth because Jesus is near. And what an awesome story that is there that you can find in Scripture and you can read it. But all of those things were confirmation to Mary to go, I made the right choice to do what? To surrender. Some of you are waiting for the confirmation before you surrender. Mary got the confirmation after she surrendered. You gotta say yes. Too many of you have been trying to be talked into things by God when God is not a negotiator. He is a master. He is a commander. He is a Lord. And so when God says go, we don't give and take. We go. And then on the way, he equips. He gives us the tools we need. He gives us the things we need. And on this journey, Mary learns so much. So much did Mary learn on this journey as she walked through this. And and some of you right now are going, Pastor Vince, my situation is just awful. You don't know my situation, so you can't tell me to be happy in my situation. I don't know about happy. You can be obedient, though. You can stay surrendered in your situation. Also, what you can do in your situation is you can learn in your situation. How many of you have ever thought about the reality that some of the places you are currently is preparing you for the place God ultimately wants you to be. Oh, Pastor Vince, you don't know. I don't know, but what I'm asking is you, is you slow down enough to learn something there or is all you're doing complaining about where you're at? My boss is this. My coworkers are that. This marriage is junk. My kids are demons. I just, where I'm at right now, Pastor Vince, you just, that really hit somebody, didn't it? I see that hand. Right now, where I'm at, it doesn't matter because I can't see past it. Well, learn something where you are. What is God trying to teach you in there? Instead of praying, God, get me out of this, you might want to start praying, Lord, teach me through this. And see what God may be able to do in you. I remember growing up, my, my dad is a pastor, and, and man, I hated it because every year I knew it was going to happen. I went to a different school every stinking year. It's not that my dad was a bad pastor. (laughs) I guess I should clarify that. My dad ended up going into churches after the train wreck happened. That was his call. I don't know why. I've often asked God why. But my dad would go into a church after infidelity happened with a pastor and someone in the church. My dad would go into a church after there was a horrible split and everything was falling apart. And so we would go for a season and dad would build it up and then he would move on to another church. So before I was a freshman in high school, I went to nine different schools. I hated it. I hated it. I couldn't stand it. Every year, you got me? Every year, I'd go into school and I'd be this guy. First couple years, just head down, this guy. Head down, this guy. By about the third year, figured out this sucked because I like to talk <laughs> and it's going to look weird if I just talk to myself with my head down I gonna, it's going to build a whole other thing and so I started just hey how are you hey what's up how are you random high fives let's do it and I started being that guy I'll give you one sorry I didn't mean to leave you hanging <laughs> then God calls me to pastor in my adult life And I look back at that season, I go, huh, I see what you did there. I can literally talk to anybody about anything, and I really don't need another body in front of me to talk. (laughs) 
which I'm going to tell you, during COVID, when we were videoing this stuff, it made it really nice for me to be able to just talk in an empty room to a bunch of cameras. I could handle it. I had to learn in the season I was in for what God was preparing me for down the road. Some of you are so anxious to get to down the road, you're not picking up the tools you need to be ready when you get there. You're not slowing down enough to go, Lord, what am, I, what am I learning right here? What am I learning in my marriage right now so that it'll be stronger in two years, three years, 10 years? What am I learning in my parenting right now It's gonna make you better when they're teenagers? Oh, I can't stand it when they get teenagers. I'm just gonna send them away. You don't get to. They're gonna stick around and you can either choose to learn the lessons now in the season that you are in that prepares you for the next season. Some of you that feel like you're called to ministry, Lord, I wanna do this. People tell me all the time, I've had pastors come and young guys that are like, hey, I wanna preach. And I'm like, let's do it. I can find you someplace to preach. No, I wanna preach here at Real Life. I'm like, bro, it took me 10 years to get to here. I'm gonna take you to some of the churches I got to preach in where everybody in the place looks at you like this. What are you learning in your season? Mary, if you'll get to it back at the end of the story, once the shepherds leave and she's sitting there with Joseph, the Bible is very clear to leave this verse in there. It says, and Mary sat in wonder and pondered these things in her heart. God, what did you show me through this season? What did you teach me? But Vince, my season has been grief filled painful and I don't know about tomorrow I promise you there's a lesson there I'm not lessening what you're walking through please don't hear that what I'm saying is there is a lesson in that season that will prepare you for what's next don't miss it don't miss it out of stubbornness or frustration. Don't miss it out of impatience. Learn the lesson. Learn where you are right now in the season you're in right now so that you're ready for the next season that you're gonna be in. So that it makes sense when you get there. I've been able to watch people grow in ministry and in moments, they be a, a year ago they're asking me a question and now they're living in the answer of that. I've been able to watch it over and over and over, even in some of your lives. Don't neglect the learning in this process. Mary sat a lot of times and just thought, what in the world am I going to do with a Messiah for a child? You know the Mary Did You Know song? She knew. <laughs> sorry. sorry if I messed that up for you too she knew, she did I mean, there's an angel who told her the whole thing she was aware she knew and she pondered it Lord what, what do you need to teach me so that I'm prepared for that what do you need to show me right now what does he need to show you right now? What does your circumstance look like? Your situation look like right now? Is God teaching you, trying to, is he doing something in you right now? And you're not liking it because you're feeling like he's stretching you and he's pulling you a little bit this way and a little bit that way. Is he doing something in you that you're not accustomed to? And it's a little uncomfortable and you go, I don't want this. God, back off a little bit. I need to be a little more comfortable. And he goes, if I make you comfortable, then I can't use you out here. If you'll let me stretch you a little bit, I'll change the world through you. I'll change the world through you. Oh, Pastor Vince, I don't know if I want that much pressure. It's interesting. There's the scripture in the book of Luke, chapter one, verse 37. That says, for with God, nothing is impossible. Even through you. Vince, my story, yeah, I know. I know. Those, those failings of the past, you watch. You watch what my God can do. Those failings of the past, he'll make that the foundation of your future if you'll let him. That's what he does. It's who he is. See, nothing is impossible with him. What I love about this story is that God, his purpose, God's purpose for me is always bigger than my perspective in the moment. 
I, I don't know. Mary knew that he was going to be king of the Jews and he would sit on the throne of his father David, that she knew that from what the angel told her. But I don't know that the understanding of the Messiah, that 2,000, however many thousand years later, there'd be a preacher in Mount Home, Arkansas going, this Jesus saved me. And he wants to save you. This Jesus that we celebrate is no longer the babe on a manger, but he is a warrior on a white horse. This Jesus that we celebrate is, is no longer wrapped in swaddling clothes, and he is no longer hanging on a sinner's cross. He walked that path. He is waiting waiting and I feel like he's just on the edge of heaven waiting for the father to go go bring him home go bring him home and listen to me church have you been looking at your situation too long to get ready to go home you still hung up on all that isn't ready I'm not this I'm not that I don't have this I don't have that God, when I get it all figured out, I'm yours. It's backwards. It's backwards. Mary's greatest asset, the greatest gift that she brought to the table was surrender. Surrender. Your circumstances are not greater than your surrender. Your surrender will trump it every time. But you have to be the one that says, Lord, I surrender. I'm yours. I haven't learned all I need to learn, but Lord, I'm yours. Teach me in this season. Lord, I haven't learned all. I don't have all that I need to have. That's all right. If you'll surrender, I can equip you. I can equip you. And I can walk you through Bible story after story after story after event after event after event where once someone surrendered to the moment, God equipped the moment. David didn't get five smooth stones until he got to the field where he fought Goliath. He didn't show up with them. God made sure they were there. We can keep going you know. You know the excuse you've been given. You know the wall you've put up that said, well, I think I'm, I mean, I'm kind of ready. I'm coming to church now, Pastor Vince, and I'm stoked that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. But there's more. There's more, and you can't imagine what it's like until you surrender. I want you to bow with me, church. Some of you have been giving God an excuse why he shouldn't use you. What if? What if like on that day so many years where God gave us the greatest gift? Today you return it to Christ and say, Lord, here am I. No more excuses. No more reasons I can't. Just a simple, here am I. Here am I. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Vince, I've been offering excuses most of my life to God. He has tried and tried and tried to get my attention. He has knocked on my heart's door. He has called me out. He has saved me over and over and over again. And I continue to come up with excuses. If that's you today, if that's where you're at, I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand and put it right back down. I've just given him excuses. I just told him why not. Why I can't. Come on, is that you? Lift it up, put it back down. I want to pray for you. If you're here this morning, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to be bold. I only get one Christmas Eve this year. 
If you're here this morning and you don't know this Jesus that we celebrate, you know about him, you've heard the stories, you sing the songs, but you don't know about him. You don't know him. You don't know his name. You don't know his grace. You haven't stepped into this purpose that he has for you. If that's you today, come on. You, you, you didn't come to Christmas Eve on accident. I, I hope you didn't show up just to check off your Christmas event list. No, you're here on purpose. You see, God orchestrated it all. Just like there were rocks in that field for David, there was a seat in this room for you. Don't think for a second God is surprised that you walked in. What is it you need to lay down before him at an altar? Come on. Take a step. I promise you, people will get out of your way. People might even surprise you and come with you. You may start your whole row asking themselves the same question. What is it that you need to give to the Lord today? What gift can you bring him today that'd be greater than you? There's already people down here praying. I'm gonna ask you one more time, take a step. Slide out of your seat. Bow before the king. Come on. There you go. Come on, take a step. You're not going to be alone. Somebody's going to meet you down here. You don't have to keep walking this path. You don't keep have to keep doing this the way you've been doing it. You say, Pastor Vince, it ain't been working. I know it ain't been working. I've been there. I've tried it. I've done it my own way. It doesn't work. There is a king. There is a savior. And his name is Jesus. And he's aching for you. He is aching for you right now. You're not here by accident. It's not happenstance. I don't believe that. He's got you here on purpose to hear a word on purpose. Will you answer? Will you answer? Come on. Put it all behind you. Put the, put the past, the lies, the, the, the whatever it is behind you. The baggage, the luggage, the trauma, the pain. Put it behind you and trust Jesus for your now and tomorrow. Come on. Pastor Vince, I don't think I can. I don't. That's a lot. Yeah, I know. I know it's a lot. I know it's not easy. Can I just ask you this so I can pray for you? Here's a church. I promise you. Listen to me. I promise you. I will not single you out. I will not come and get you. I will not do that. But for just a few seconds, I want you to be real honest with me. Every head bowed, no one looking around. I want you to be honest with me. See, I'm sensing that there are more people in the room that need to move, but I also understand it's a heavy room. Let me just ask you this question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to be honest with me back. If you're here right now and you're saying, Pastor Vince, I know that I need to walk forward. But I just can't. I want to pray for you. I know I need to take a step forward, but I just don't feel I can right now. If that's you right now, I just want you to lift your hand and put it right back down. It's okay. I see you. I see you. Come on. I see you. It's not easy. I'd ask this morning that you would pray that if this is the first time that you're coming to grips with who Jesus is in your life, you sense that spirit convicting you, kind of pulling at you a little bit, that you'd say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Jesus, I understand that you died for me, that you took my sin and my guilt and my shame to a cross on my behalf. And you have given me the opportunity to be cleansed, clean, made whole, all the past gone. And Jesus, I need that. I need you. 
I'm just going to ask you to pray that right where you are. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. I accept you as the Lord of my life. Listen, if you've made that prayer, if you've said that, if you've made that decision, whether here at an altar or in your seat, we had people last week make that decision, but if you've made that decision, all of heaven, you and I may be singing, oh, holy night and silent night, but in heaven right now, they're singing joy to the world because another one has come home. But you gotta share it. You gotta tell somebody. You can believe in your heart, but the word says we have to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. So come and find me. Come and find one of the staff. Go grab one of the worship team. Go, go grab somebody holding a sign or somebody helping without talking. Tell them, today I said yes to Jesus. We want to know. We want to walk with you. You're not done. The journey's just starting. But we want to walk with you. Father, I love you. And Jesus, I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. God, I thank you for all that you are. God, so many blessings. So many blessings. God, I ask that you be with us as we go out throughout this day. That you be with these families as they either travel to holiday situations, God or not. Maybe they're just going home and they're shutting it down for the weekend. Whatever the case may be, I pray your spirit and your presence rest on them and that you'd give them favor. Favor. 